Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> so uh, today's topic is Pinara. Pinara, it means Financial Industry Regulatory Authority of United States of America. So Pinara regulates the investment or industry related, you know, uh, regulations, design regulations, principles, framework, and that will uh, apply to all businesses, including investment businesses like broking, custodian, uh, commodity business, agency, broker, <clears throat> broker dealer, fund houses, hedge funds, mutual funds, private placement investments, and many more. So that's what it becomes essential to understand how Pinera works. What are their different reports? For example, uh, focus focus part second and second a monthly filing annual report filing form obs filing uh, security 17 a4 third party report filing sls filing because those are the report names right sipc security investor protection corporation report filing so there are many more reports that i'll walk you through the different reports which you can understand how companies file the reports or how companies uh, or in institutions they follow the calendar of Pinara and file the regulatory reportings on time to time because in a hedge fund, mutual fund, private equity investment or broking or any any investment business I would say because here we are going to discuss most of the things from the investment business operations perspective. Because each and every institutions, they are abide, they are, um, they are, I would say, abide with the law where they need to submit all the uh, information, investment related information to the Pinara institution as well as Security Exchange Commission of America. Because they monitor the information and they, they, implement the controlling measure controlling measure it means see ultimately why Pinara is coming to picture <clears throat> because Pinara wanted to uh, wanted to or, or I would say Pinara's main job is to protect protect the risk or I would say to control the risk or protect the uh, interest of investor so where the control they, con they implement the controlling measures <clears throat> or they take the affirmative actions to control the risk, right? That's the main aspect. Second is to see the market requirement. Sometimes that happens. For example, let's say now the AI is the main topic, right? AI, it means artificial intelligence. Now everyone is expecting the regulation, separate regulation for artificial intelligence. And even United States of America, they have drafted the regulations for AI, artificial intelligence. Even though you can go and check the Ministry of uh, Communication, I believe they have also proposed the same. We should have a separate regulation for artificial intelligence. So my point here is, as and when if you see any new things come into picture in any industry that if that required any special regulations, then Finera come into picture. Finera is located in US or it is for United States of America. Most of the United States industries that regulated by the Finera regulation. Already I told you Finera it means financial industry regulatory authority. Different different industries that comes under the Finera. They take the membership of Finera. And then Finera regulates them. And with that pretext, it's essential to understand as an investment analyst, as a fund accountant, private equity accountant, or regulatory reporting team, that you should know it how Finera works. What are all the different reports that you need to follow the calendar and uh, fill the required information on their regulatory side or means Finera side. Finera has its own platform. You need to provide information prescribed format as per the legal terms and conditions or sections, I would say, right? 
FINRA has a multiple reports throughout the year that each and every institution needs to provide or update on their sites. So now I am sure now you've got the idea about what is FINRA and how it works. FINRA is the regulatory body, regulatory body. who design the regulations for most of the US industries. For example, let's say still, if you are not able to understand, I'll give the example. If I talk about SEBI, SEBI regulate, SEBI it means Security Exchange Board of India regulate the Indian industries, right? Indian industries. So similar way in US, so they have FINRA, Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, who regulate the most of the industries, who design the principles, who develop the reporting formats, who design, uh, whenever, see, I'll tell you what, how this works happen. In a parliament, parliament of each and every country, because each and every country, they have a parliamentarian system, or maybe sometime that depends on the government's nature and all. But if I take the example of US, India, UK, we have a parliamentary board or parliamentary system. Parliamentary board draft laws, right? And after the laws approved in parliament, parliament of that particular country, that convert into the regulations, right? Regulations. For example, let's say, as I told, Security Investor Protection Corporation, for example, Dodd Frank. So you would see dot frag. I'll come on that as well, not at the moment. But it's a regulation, right? Designed for to protect the interest of investor, right? So you would see that in US as well as in UK. So means that's how they manage their uh, the investors' interest and all. So similar way, if I talk about India, so India has a, their own regulatory body who monitor the different markets, who monitor the investments like capital market investments who monitor the op options like futures and options market investments who monitor the different insider trading activities and they always try to protect the interest of investor how because see they need the data and that's how they ask companies who are the member of finra or who are the member of cb cb works in india so don't get confused in it I just wanted to give you a, a given an example so you can understand in a proper way, right? And Finera works uh, for a USA market where Finera need a details of business or transactions and that details you would provide to the Finera organization. And once you provide information to them, the their regulatory or compliance team monitor each and every details carefully and they reach out to your risk team in case if they required any clarification as such on any point or on any transactions. If they see any suspicious transactions, then they immediately escalate or click on red flag because as it's a risk, right? When we talk about risk, risk can be, let's say uh, the investment company. I'll tell you, I'll tell you the few things that you would realize it. I hope you guys are aware about Ponzi scheme or cheat fund, right? Ponzi scheme or cheat fund. If you guys are aware about Ponzi scheme or cheat fund, then, so there was one instance, I don't want to reveal the name of that particular hedge fund as it's, uh, as it's, uh, I would say the secret or their private name. I don't want to reveal on my channel, but yes, there was one hedge fund Each fund invested in Ponzi scheme. Ponzi scheme. Ponzi scheme, it means um, go and check the Hera Ferry picture. Hera Ferry. Paisa double, right? So go and check that scheme. So it means hedge funds invested in Ponzi scheme up to 60% fund invested in Ponzi scheme. And after one year, one year, that Ponzi scheme means whatever that Ponzi scheme was that declared as a bankrupt. 
then once the uh, hedge fund declare as a bankrupt ultimately who lost the money investor how sir investor lost the money because investor invested in hedge fund and hedge fund invested in ponzi scheme and finally ponzi scheme declared as a bankrupt after the detailed investigation of this case got to know got to know where hedge fund manager hedge fund manager they invested money in the uh, ponzi scheme and that the ponzi scheme was was belonged to the one of the close relative of fund manager close relative of fund manager fm so it is the matter of conflict of interest right so it means if you see any any such a cases as such conflict of interest or to invest in a shell company shell companies it means forged companies to invest in a uh, risky companies or to invest in a highly illiquid investment where uh, the regulator they cannot also trace the details of property or details of that particular investment instruments and all so hedge funds they can do it so 50 to 60% hedge funds or 50 to 60% private equity uh, investment companies they have uh, allegations where they manipulate or uh, the regulations or they invest into different financial instruments where regulator won't be able to catch them why they do it just because of the purpose of their investment scheme is to save the taxes or to mislead to the government or to uh, maybe sometime from a fund manager side to make the extra money by misleading to the investors there are hundreds of cases been registered already on a finra side you can go and check it so those are very interesting cases you go and check the sides and you can try to understand it how this entire hedge fund private equity or mutual funds how how they, you know they works and what is the role of them you know uh, the organizations like finra come into picture or how they play crucial role if you see uh, as i as i uh, uh, give you the example of the scheme so it means finra they have uh, they have encountered this particular you know issue means they have hundreds of other cases thousands of cases i would say you can go and check it if you see any interesting case then you can go and check the cases and try to understand it but the important point here is the organization like finra who support security exchange commission of united states to get the right information at right time so where they can prevent the potential risk or frauds right and that's the reason if you are a part of regulatory team it's your responsibility to ensure whatever information that you are providing to the regulatory bodies like finra ensure it twice thrice and provide only accurate information don't think about only your job oriented beyond that what if you have or your grandparents or your people like who knows better they have invested in xyz hedge fund private equity fund mutual funds or xyz funds and you are the reporting analyst you did not perform reporting accurately and that's what it got led to the let's say big scam or scandal think about it what if you have invested your entire amount entire saving life saving in xyz scheme and now that fund got bankrupt what will happen just think about it so it means it's your responsibility to do the thorough reporting of each and every transactions and provide that information to the organizations like finra wherever that you work that doesn't matter it's it's your beyond the corporate responsibility or job responsibility why don't you think as this is your social responsibility right yes if you could provide accurate information and if that helps organizations like finra to protect or to uh, prevent the risk then that would really help to all including investor uh, then your government and many more other stakeholders 
as well so that is the whole and sole purpose of finera so now i hope you got the idea about how finera works and all i'll walk you through few reportings so which you can understand how the reporting report filings or reporting works so there are reports which you can note it down so those are important ones where so you would see uh, uh, you know with the different investment banks the regulatory uh, teams where they file the different reports on time to time so they follow the calendars so i'll walk you through the calendars so note it down if you want that information so here this is uh, this is the finera uh, site so where wait a minute so this is the finera site finera as i told finera it means it's a regulatory body where they regulate the market and now so here we are on the sides of regulator so try to understand few things here this information is valid for 2023 and 2024 here so you need to file reports different reports due diligently if you miss any reports as such see when we say report it means i'll i'll tell you quickly for example let's say you are, you are in the investment business so it means you have your fund you are into investment business you have raised 100 crore investment you have invested 80 crore into different financial instruments like equity bonds debenture loans etc repo etc right if you have invested in different financial instruments so when we file reporting what information is required to file the reportings so here two aspects are very important one is cash which you have raised from the investor and other one is investment holding details holding details so when we say holding details the format of holding details should be normal like let's say for example legal entity number means fund number then uh, currency transaction currency investment id investment company name holding uh, amount means how much amount that the fund invested in xyz fund uh, in xyz transaction transaction value counterparty name tax information if it is applied right then cash processing or settlement information all that information that you can update on a finera site so that activity we can call it as a regulatory filing and this activity you will have to perform several times in a year all right so i hope you got this idea now so i'll walk you through this few important terms or report names so which you can note it down so uh, the, go through the summary to assist members in their financial reporting obligations finera is issuing this notice to provide the due dates for annual reports the first report is annual then other is financial and reporting uh, financial and operational combined uni uniform signal single sorry focus so that report we call it as a short form would be focus report from a custody custody it means if you have any uh, custody business line or as investment institutions if you have anything in custody in that case you will have to file this report annual report is for everyone right then focus report filing that are due in 2023 or the first quarter of 2024 so this report will due in 2023 or four in first quarter of 2024 Finera reminds members that all such a filings they submit to Finera must be made electronically through Finera Gateway. Finera Gateway is allowed to the member who are the member of Finera institutions, so they can update the information. Whatever information is required, they need to update that information on the Finera site and submit that information on time to time, right? the due dates set forth in this notice are solely as the filing that are specified in the notice and are required under sea rule 17a5 or finera rule 452 the this due dates takes into account the federal holiday calendar as appropriate right so these are the regulations which defines about how you can file the reportings and all or what are the due dates and all so here i'll walk you through the calendar let's see what are the dates for which reports 
so accordingly you can note but no, note it down if you are looking for any regulatory interview so you may expect questions on all those the report first report is your first report is annual report where each and every institutions needs to file annual report firm must submit their annual reports to finera in ele electronic form pursuant to sea rule security exchange commission sorry uh, sea let me check the full form so security sea the rule is rule full form s so here might be sc8 main security exchange authority rule they they have authority as well so where they monitor it so i'll provide this sea full form letter on maybe in the comment section right but yes and after that here if you see firm must also file the reports at the regional office of the security sec means security exchange commission in which the firm has its principal place of business so uh, each and every report that needs to send it to the finera as well as to the security exchange commission as well right so which is located in washington dc finera reminds members that the security sec means security exchange commission has a process for electronic filing of annual reports in lieu of filing in a paper form which the security exchange simplified and update in reports updated already that updated in reports so it means at a time you need to send the reports to the security exchange commission as well as to the finera one report that you can send the physical copy to the security exchange commission or maybe digital copy of that particular report to the the reporting formats they will provide on their site so you don't need to worry about those so they provide that formats and all everything uh, to you on their sites right but yes you need to file that so important aspect is one report that need to submit to the finera and other reports same reports that need to submit to the security exchange commission as and when required all right so another is in february 2021 the security exchange commission issued an order that permits the specified forms an additional 30 calendar days to file so it means for annual reports uh, once the annual year is completed so within a 30 days of time that reports needs to be submitted to the finera or to the uh, security exchange commission as well so 30 days ex extension to wish to avail themselves for the 30 days extension must provide notification to finera as described further in the regulatory notice 2105 if you see any latency delays in any data as such you can request the regulatory to have 30 days time to file their annual reporting but it should be it should be already means notified in in advance a notification it should send to the regulatory body then only it will allow you to file the reports with the extension of 30 days otherwise they can penalize you rule number 17 a 5d that defines require firms that are member of the securities investor protection corporation sipc in our regulations most of the time you would say short forms sipc sipc it means securities investor protection corporation to file the annual report with sipc through an agreement between sipc and finera sipc is a separate body who work only for investors and finera is an industry industry regulatory body who work for entire industries right so it means finera and sipc they work together even see finera is the regulatory body where they work for sipc they work for security exchange commission they work for security uh, exchange association or different different regulations and all because finera ensure it whether you are following different regulations or not that's their responsibility firm that is uh, when a firm that is sipc means again uh, securities investor protection corporation member file an annual report to finera gateway so this will also constitute filing with sipc members may consult the sipc website for further information filing or due timing and everything matters a lot so make sure it you are filing 
or updating information on their sites within a time otherwise it will lead to the penalty and suspension so they have mentioned everything so i'll walk you through their uh, strict actions as well they can take strict actions so here if you see due dates of periods or filings annual report filings so see the filing so and within a 20 30 days extension also they have given november 30 to january 30 if you're uh, if you have these dates so you can file the reports within a february means 28 so there are the dates so here you just need to check the dates and you need to follow the same for your particular so point here is if you have started your business in the month of november and let's say you then your year would be january 30 2023 so you can follow the february 28 would be the date of your reports so within that time you need to file the regulatory reports and confirm it to them otherwise that will lead to the penalty if you have started your business in month of march so it means may 13 30 30th would be uh, your due date means due date so you can file the uh, that particular uh, you know reports within a 30 days from the may 13th right so this is how you can follow the uh, regulations and try to understand it, their requirements as well. First of all, try to understand the reports requirement and accordingly file the regulations or uh, file, follow the regulations, I would say. So that was about, so it means you would see different dates. That was all about your annual reports, right? Annual report is must for everyone. There is no exception. Then other report is focus report. I already walk you through the uh, full form of this focus report. Firm must submit their focus report electronically through the e-focus. E-focus, it means Finera has their system, e-focus, available via Finera Gateway. Finera Gateway, it means Finera has its own gateway where uh, the uh, members members of Finera, they can submit the, uh, submit the different reports or uh, submit the input or information on their sites, right? For information about completing the focus report, please. So you can go here and check the guides, how you can find the reports and all. So I'll provide you the link in description. You can go through the different reports as well and check it if you want. The important, again, point here is due dates. So you need to always check the due dates. So few reports, focus report has a strict deadline, no extension. So if you see, the report name would be monthly fifth focus part second and second a filings so you need to check the report names or types and their prescribed format so accordingly you can file the reports this report focus report comes with stringent deadline period ending 20 uh, january 31st 2023 so you need to submit that report again uh, within February uh, means before the 2024 or due date is this. So on due date, you need to file or update the information on regulator sites. And if you don't update the information on regulator sites, ultimately that will lead to the penalty. Depends on the transaction size. So they can charge you penalty as you have not followed the regulations. So report name is important one. If you're looking for interview monthly and fifth focus part second reports where you need to submit on a monthly basis every month january february march april may so every month you need to file that report right so i'll walk you through other reports as well quarterly focus report so quarterly it means that same report you need to fill monthly and again quarterly as well so part second and year so those are the regulations in the regulations you would see part one two section one two three four right so they they, they have provided formats of filing as well so you need to file this report quarterly also. Same report, if you see here, same report that you need to file yearly as well, annual schedule filing. So same report needs to be filed on uh, annual basis also. So it means regulators will provide you debts. You need to follow the, all the important dates while filing the reports. Then another report is, important report is, custody right firms are required to file form custody pursuant to sea rule 17a so let me check sea i just need a full form to 
explain you i maybe s e a rule s e a rule s e a rule s e a rule mathematical and model oops s e a rule or property s e a 17a every member broker or dealer subject to okay so all see this all broker and dealer they are abide to send the reports to the this format first of all let me go through the sea means what exactly sea rule uh, this type of applies to the following types of entity is a member of national securities exchange who transact a business in a securities directly with other than members of a national securities exchange a broker or dealer who transact business in a securities through the medium of member of national securities exchange a broker or dealer including otc derivatives dealer as the term is defined in 24b 3b uh, 243b dot registered pursuant to section 15 of the act okay security security based swaps dealer registered pursuant to so it means this security exchange association so i'm not if i'm not wrong the meaning of would be the security exchange uh, association so if you have a uh, transactions related to security market then this report is must so uh, which one is yeah uh, <clears throat> custody report is must so it means if you are into the hedge fund private equity broker broker dealer or any investment related activities swaps and everything then you need to file this report this file this report because security exchange associations so that contents the information here already i have walked you through you can okay. check this one so record to have a original branch of this okay it, this not this one here yeah. so this information is applied to the every member broker dealer or all records to the uh the book their books bank statement cancel check cash reconciliations and everything that needs to be submitted so the requirement of this here if you see they have a all trial balance is computation of aggregate independent indebtedness everything that you need to provide to the um, regulators reconciliations then work internal audit details capital details minimum balance maintenance liquidity all information that needs to be submitted payable receivables everything means each and every details that needs to be submitted to the uh, regulators if you are into the investment business broker dealer swaps otc derivatives any product as such this will apply to all the businesses so you will have to file custody reporting here the timing and dates already given that you need to follow if you are a part of regulatory reporting so you can check the finera sites and see how you can file the uh, regulatory reports on time to time right so apart from this there is a one more report that you need to file that is s s o i filing s s o i filing so uh, five times in a year that you will have to file december march june september and again december you will have to four time i would say it's a quarterly one not five times my bad quarterly reporting that you need to file uh, to the regulator but this is all about supplemental statement of income full form of this ssi it means so you need to submit the income statement to the uh, that particular you know, finera regulatory body so where they can verify all the key information and apart from that so this description is important so this description defines supplemental schedule for derivatives and other off balance sheet items so especially cash flow hail cash flow hail that would be your off off balance sheets items so that also you need to provide in the prescribed format to the regulators 
unless the subject to the minimum minimum exceptions the form obs full form already we have discussed about must be filled must be filled by all member forms that self clear their prop proprietary transactions or clear transactions for other or carry customer accounts and all other member forms that I have a pursuant to SEA rule means again broker dealer rule a minimum dollar net capital requirement equal to or greater than if the fund size or investment size is at least 10 million in report uh, 10 million then you can report it so it means one one lakh dollar if you have your capital and the uh, total 10 million in the reportable items pursuant to the form OBS then you can you need to report this as well OBS it means of balance its items okay if you have re reported the amount this one capital and as well as the total exposure in the balance it then you need to record it you need to report it to the for value if you see you need to report it to the uh, that Finera institutions through supplemental schedule for derivatives and other of balances here supplemental it is all talking about supplements while preparing the financial statements companies funds private equity funds they always maintain the off balance its items uh, for cash flow hedge or different different hedges and all so you need to ensure that you are providing the supplemental it means additional information which you have carried out throughout the year that information it needs to be provided to the regulator right so they have a system so where you can follow their e-system and you can provide all the information which is required so derivatives and other balanced items that needs to be highlighted to the regulators within a time or i would say within a prescribed format all formats which are available on the sites you can go through the each and every format if you are interested in regulations you cannot find all this information in books but regulator they provide you the insights which you can follow it right form obs filing form obs it means derivatives and other off balance it's off as i told because his items it's not mandatory to record it on your balance it's so you can maintain it separately and if you maintain it separately so you can provide that information separately to the regulators through their different supplemental inventory schedule right so i hope you got this dates are see which are common so you can see means for each and every reports there would be dates that you need to follow and apply the uh that same in your company as well and follow the same metrics or dates or calendar while preparing the financial reports the other one is supplemental inventory same the sys must be filled by the form that is required to file focus report part a focus report part a or fox report uh, part one with inventory positions as of the end of the focus or fork period less than the firm has minimum dollar net capital requirement less than one lakh dollar if you have a one lakh dollar minimum capital is one lakh dollar then you need to file this information but the important one is inventory position consisting only money market mutual funds if you have an inventory from the money market then only you need to submit this information and this regulation will apply to the money market mutual funds a firm with inventory positions consisting only of money market mutual fund must affirmatively indicate through the e-focus system that no sys filing is required for the reporting period so it means if it is required or not required accordingly they need to provide information to the regulators i hope now you got the idea about how the regulatory works so uh, again one more report that is also important that you need to follow the report name is supplemental liquidity and schedule sls the new sls become effective on march 1 2022 so this regulation means report come into existence on march 1st 2022 the SLS must be filled by each carrying member with 25 million. If you see your size of the investment is 25 million dollar or more in a free credit. So it means in a bank loans or maybe let's say in a uh, credit business if you if you are into or in a repo size transactions if you have as such then you need to uh, fill or uh, 
update this report on the Pinara site. Here they have given the threshold as well. If you have this, meet the here if you see a member needs to need not file the SLS for any period where the member does not meet 25 million. If you have a more than 25, 25 or 25 million exposure, then only you need to file it. So see if your investment has the exposure of this, then you need to file it. Otherwise, no need to file it. And up, up. when you file the information, then you need to follow the dates as well. So SLS is a monthly filing reports. Okay. All right. Important other important details. So this one is very important one. Why the regulatory this information is important. Okay. So FINRA gateway and entitlements. So FINRA reminds firm that they must use their current FINRA entitlement user ID and password access FINRA gateway. FINRA gateway provide you the access password and ID everything and you can reach out to the this desk if you have any technical uh, technical you know issues as such right. The important is here this area for us. This important area it means it's notes. Now I'll conclude it. So here this points. Yeah, these are the points. End notes. Read one by one each points. All such a filings must be received by Finera by the required due dates to avoid specified fees as set forth in a Schedule A to Finera's by laws and to avoid suspension of FINRA membership. So it means all reports, it should be filled or filed on time. Then see regulatory notice 1146 annual audit report. FINRA to require electronic submission of annual audit report. So all report, it needs to be submit electronically or if you have, they have, if they have any other requirements, so you can follow that as well. Electronic filing broker dealer annual report broker dealer it means if you are into the security business or dealing business in bond market or OTC market and all so this regulation will apply to you also so you need to follow that see regulatory notice 177 1707 updated security exchange commission no action guidance and instructions on electronic filing of broker dealer annual report so it means for a broker dealer so it must be physical report not the uh, electronic report as per the this notice but check it on the sites security exchange act yep now i got the full form of so i was saying security exchange association it's not a security exchange association my bad it's a security exchange act release released on so you can check with this number on february 12 2021 order extending the annual report filing deadline for certain smaller broker dealers so that allow you to extend the reports because due to other obligations and all or to information to collect information and all so that provided that information. Okay. So once a member that meets the conditions set forth in the security exchange order submit the required notification to FINRA the notification need not be submitted again for as long as the member continues to meet those conditions. If member no longer meets the conditions of security exchange order it may not continue to avail itself of the 30 day extension. FINRA news released for SIPC and FINRA streamlined reporting process for a broker dealer. So you can go through the different different processes and see how it works for you and other reports as well. So yes, so these are the reports and discussion on this regulatory reporting. So now the most important aspect is why so this discussion is important or why reportings are important. Because if you are a part of regulatory, if you are a part of hedge fund, mutual fund, private equity, investment banks, brokers, broker dealers, prime brokers, custodians or any auditing firm as such, you would see the uh, regulatory profiles or regulatory analysts, they are earning packages in you know lakhs like let's say 10 lakhs, 20 lakhs because to interpret the regulations and to provide guidance or to update the information on regulatory sites and to maintain the deadlines and all it's not an easy task right so people here required like who are very uh, attentive who can interpret easily whose legal understanding is i mean they are able to understand the different regulations and all so they can join regulatory teams or regulatory businesses and they can earn salaries in lakhs so my intention behind this session is 
to uh, help you and uh, to understand or to make you understand guys how the regulatory works how the regulation works so accordingly you can you know uh, you can join any regulatory businesses if you have any as such or profiles as such if you have and make your best career in that industry i'm done with uh, the session on finara regulation if you have any questions and concerns you can post your requirement in job description if you are looking for a highly you know content like this or courses like this you can join my live courses we have a one on one mentorship we have a group sessions for you or if you, if you want like ad hoc sessions with me directly you can join i mean courses or any you know programs whatever available that we have so i'll give you the detail uh, information of different courses and programs in the job description so that you can enroll it i would say you know uh, if you if you see what i believe i'll tell you so learning it means you should keep you know learn new things that's how you can target your companies uh, and uh, dream jobs as well so yes at the last i would say join in you know, the courses we have designed curative courses so join the courses today to stay one step ahead in your career with gmt academy so we are here to help you we are here to support you so that you can grow in your career trust me more than 4 lakh students and working professionals they they have connected with us and they are enjoying the content they are enjoying everything and they got help to go ahead in their career so you can be the next if you're looking for any paid courses as such you can contact on cell number 7 3876092330 or you can text me in description also so text me on whatsapp on this number or else text in description so i'll uh, or comment provide comment i'll contact you provide your reference number i'll contact you and discuss even if you are looking for any career guidance and all you can book the appointment today to get the right advice that will save your time thank you for this uh thank you i would say for the session so watch this and share this content with others and my humble request would be if you like this initiative if you like this initiative so i would request you please uh, you know subscribe this comment uh, your thought in the comment section and share this content with others this will help me to uh, you know do again means you know bring more content like this for you guys so which you can understand and enjoy so i'm done with the today's session we'll see you in next session with the different regulations so next chapter would be isma so guess it what is isma and try to post your thought in the comment section about isma but yes next session would be on isma regulation thank you